Welcome back folks and hello to my channel newbies. Welcome back to the fifth episode of Once Upon a Mind, the fairy tale of your brain with yours truly, Olympia. I spent years studying the human brain, what makes it tick, how it works, and today I'm here to dissect your brain, I know that sounds weird, to let you know what a Disney parent is and basically what a Disney dad is in tribute of Father's Day and present to you four awesome Disney parents without whose mistakes our princesses would have never grown, but more importantly, the fact that just because they're dads, they also learn from their experience and learned invaluable lessons, creating a much healthier relationship with their daughters and sons. So I wanted to take you through the four types of Disney dads. Uh, all dads are very different, some of them even different species, but Stick with me to the end of this video so I can show you the one common denominator that unites all these dads. And before you get all smarty pants on me, it is not the love they have for their sons and daughters. Duh, that would be too easy. So stick around. Also, make sure to smash that subscribe button, make my dad proud, and give me a huge thumbs up. Uh, ring that bell so you guys know when I'm making new videos every Thursday. And let's start. Before I introduce you to the four different dads of Disney, first of all, I'd like to say that a very pivotal moment in a child's life is when they realize that their parents are human and basically not perfect. Now, when you come to this realization as a child, it kind of feels like you got smacked on the head by a newspaper because it was always there right in front of you, but you refused to see it. So when I first saw my parents' mistake, I was horrified. Uh, not because they did anything uh, unforgivable, God forbid, but because that pinnacle of perfection, that embodiment of righteousness, just crumbled. And that's okay, because harsh truth time, no matter how much you try, guys, no matter how much you want to seem perfect for us, I'm speaking as a kid right now, you will fail. We will see you, mistakes and all. But allowing your child to see you make a mistake and owning up to it instead of covering it up is one of the most healthiest, realistic things you can do for your child. Because trust me, as the years progress, we relate to your imperfection and not this image that you're trying to create for us. Obviously, it is uh, scary for a child to realize that super mom is just mom or indestructible dad has a few cracks in them, but it does lead to a healthier, more realistic upbringing of the child, which also leads to a better and healthier relationship between you and your child. Now, a mistake could be as simple as a white lie. So one time they told me that they didn't have my favorite cereal, when in reality, they just didn't want me hyped up on sugar, which makes sense. And then the second thing is parents or fathers saying a white lie for example, no, mommy and daddy are not fighting, they're just disagreeing on something. When I bet you, in reality, now that I've grown up, mommy and daddy were probably playing each episode of how to get away with murder in their minds while trying to keep a smile on their face. So guess what the second parent is? Guess what the parent that is trying to hide the ugly truth? Uh, for me, this was, for example, the cause of a relative's death, a Disney parent. Now. What is a Disney parent? Now, I was actually really surprised that this term existed, but a Disney parent is basically a parent, or in this case, a dad, that is trying to retain their child's innocence for much longer than it should be around. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to the four dads, the four awesome dads, that despite being a Disney parent, in reality and as a definition, led to their child's mistakes, rebellion, whatever you want to call it, but also the fact that because they were Disney dads, that led them to learning invaluable lessons and basically bringing forth the movies you see today. So, dad number one, may I present to you the king of the seven seas, the father of the seven daughters, apparently one for every sea, and yeesh seven daughters, King Triton. Now, King Triton is the embodiment of regal, authority, uh, power, and as you can see from this scene, as long as you live under my ocean, you'll obey my rule. Clear. He's basically the dad that says, if you live under my roof, you will live under my rules. 
Now, if your dad is anything like that, give me a hell's yeah in the comments below. But because he was trying to protect his child, Ariel's innocence, and because he was afraid for her to get exposed to the world of men and her innocence basically disappearing, he kept on to that. He was a Disney dad, the, what, the definition I said before, which led to Ariel's rebellion and doing the one thing that he asked not to, which is basically swim to the surface and fall in love with the worst thing you can fall in love, a human. Even though I believe that she fell in love with the idea, check out my video above, I will also link it below, about signs that you are in love with an idea rather than the actual person. However, King Trident's rigid behavior and the fact that he was trying to retain his child's innocence led to Ariel's rebellion. Which by the way, I'm not saying that it's okay to ditch your family and give up your voice and follow some guy, some sailor, slash prince. But like Sebastian says, well, it's like I always say, Your Majesty, children got to be free to lead their own life. Now, from sea to desert, from mermaid to the leader of Agrabah, let me present to you Jasmine's father, the Sultan. Now, unlike King Trident, the Sultan is all about leadership. He's all about tradition. And as we can see from this scene, it's not only this law. I'm not going to be around forever, and, well, I, I just want to make sure you're taken care of, provided for. He basically wants his daughter to be taken care of, and wants to be provided for, which, which father doesn't. However, she's also locked up in this castle, and she's never ventured into the outside, because he doesn't want her to see the ugly truth, what is outside. And, and again, being a Disney parent led to what? Correct. The rebellion of Jasmine leaving the castle and falling in love with the one person that she shouldn't have, a poor common boy, Aladdin. My third dad for today is a guy that would literally sacrifice his life for his country and most importantly, for honor. Mulan's dad, Bazoon. It is an honor to protect my country and my family. So you'll die for honor. I will die doing what's right. But if you... I know my place. It is time you learned yours. Now, unlike Chiden and unlike Sultan, he's not about power nor leadership. He's all about honor, which is the very sacred and fundamental trait embedded in the Chinese culture. And because he's about honor, he expects Mulan to follow in the same footsteps, becoming a good bride, wife, mother, basically... <sighs> So, again, because he wants to be a Disney dad and keep Mulan's innocence in this, uh, in this system, this societal structure of what a woman should do, guess what she does? Yup, she rebels also. But unlike Ariel and Jasmine, she actually joins an army, which is pretty badass. She does fall in love, but one woman in a, an army of men, I mean, what are the chances? Now, for my fourth and favorite father of all times, just keep swimming, our little Nemo's father, Marlin. Now, parenthesis, by the way, Disney really saved their ass on this movie because up until the 2000s, most movies were focused on the child, so Ariel, Jasmine, Mulan, rather than the father or the mother. And also, if you notice, the parents, the fathers, kind of serve like a gateway for them to finding true love, which is really sick and unsettling, because it's like saying that without those fathers, without the fact that those fathers were the definition of a Disney parent, they would never find true love. And also, Disney had this huge thing about matricide. It was killing off mothers all over the place. I mean, in the first 10 minutes, Cinderella, Tarzan, Bambi, for crying out loud, uh, have their mothers killed off. So. There were two options. Either the father remarried and you had this classic evil stepmom, which by the way is a huge slap in the face to all the amazing stepmothers out there, or single parenthood, which wasn't really popular in the Cinderella times. So Nemo, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the first movie that really focuses on single parenthood in terms of a father. And comment below if you can remember another movie like that. This is really important because all these psychology theories in the real world focus 
in terms of parenthood focused on the parent, the father. So you had this disparity. You had Disney focusing on the child, psychology theories focusing on the parent, and then you're like, why is no one focusing on both? Why is no one focusing on this relationship? And this is where we have Finding Nemo. This movie, thank God, is not about Nemo finding true love, which would be very weird considering he's like a six-year-old, but how this movie made the relationship of Marlon, the father, and Nemo uh, healthier, more realistic, and yeah. So Marlon, the little protective neurotic, uh, very in tune with his emotions, by the way, father. So he lost 399 eggs and a wife in one day. Talk about a bad day. So he's very protective of that 400th egg, little Nemo, which makes sense. He doesn't allow Nemo to go far away from the anemone. That. He even gets to the extent where he's like, maybe you should go to school next year. I don't think you're ready for school yet. However, Marlon's identity is kind of defined by his role as a father and with those around him. So he kind of shows traits of dependent personality disorder. Uh, check out my video above. I will link it below on the Cinderella complex on signs of dependent personality disorder. But because he knows, basically all he knows is how to be a father. If Nemo leaves, he really doesn't have anything left. So out of all the fathers, I think Marlon is the most Disney parent. And like the previous fathers, what does Nemo do? He touches the butt. Okay, by the way, this scene. One more move, mister. D don't you dare. If you put one fin on that boat, are you listening to me? Don't touch the boat. Nemo! You touch the butt. Okay, you get it. And like our little wise Dory says, I promised him I'd never let anything happen to him. That's a funny thing to promise. Well, you can't never let anything happen to him. Then nothing would ever happen to him. Not much fun for little Harpo. Not a lot of fun for Harpo. So all these fathers, all these four types of fathers, whether mermaid fish from China, Sultan, King of Arabia, whatever, what do they have in common? They're all Disney fathers, literally and also by definition. They all want to retain child's innocence, but I promise you a common denominator. The common denominator of all these fathers is the following. He said, it's time to let go. Everything's gonna be all right. How do you know? How do you know something bad isn't gonna happen? I don't. It's this fact that they can't let go and they don't know that if they let go, how things will turn out that leads to their children's rebellious behavior. So King Triton, he learned that, you know what? I did the best I could. Now it's time for my kid to make their own decisions. Uh, same thing with the Sultan. The Sultan used his power as a leader to actually fuel his power as a father and basically say the following. Is that law? What's the problem? Father? Well, am I Sultan or am I Sultan? From this day forth, the princess shall marry whoever she deems worthy. And then Mulan's father, who doesn't really say a lot, but he sees that honor doesn't have to come through the expectation of what society has for us, but it can come in the most unexpected ways. And finally, Marlin, who basically embodies the lesson of all these fathers, the fact that he has to let go and guess what? You don't know if something bad's gonna happen. You just gotta trust that you did a good job and that your kid will do the best. Now, in terms of my message for Father's Day, I'm gonna make this a little more personal. I hope you can see me. Dads, it makes sense for you wanna be perfect. It makes sense that you wanna be Disney dads, but your daughters don't love you because you're a superman, nor do we expect you to be. Your sons don't look up to you and wanna be like you because of your authority or how, or how well you throw a ball. You keep preaching to us that, we, that you love us no matter what. So why couldn't it be the same thing around? So to all the fathers, stepfathers, godfathers, grandfathers, dads, and any other father out there, thank you for all the invaluable lessons you teach us on a daily basis. Thank you for being awesome dads and supporting us and teaching us lessons, even if those lessons come from your mistakes. Happy Father's Day, Nico. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, dads, stepfathers, godfathers, grandfathers, and any other father out there. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button, make my dad proud, give me a huge thumbs up, make mama algorithm love me, and ring that bell so you guys know when I'm making new videos every Thursday. And that's it, folks. Ooh, I'm hungry. Mama.